Hello, two. Hello, hello. Hello, two. One, two. Hello. Hello.
all gathered here this morning to pay our last respect to one of our beloved fathers who has just answered the home call in the person of late Professor Emeritus Theophilus Oladipo Ogunlesi, FAS OFR. Shortly, the academic procession will enter the hall, and I'll ask that we all rise for the procession to come in. Thank you. for the procession. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, may we have a seat, please. Once again, it's my pleasure to say good morning to us all and to remind us that we are all here for the Line in State program for late Professor Emeritus Theophilus Oladipo Ogulesi, FAS OFR. This ceremony is expected to be a very solemn ceremony, and as such, we do not encourage clapping and hailing. We, it's my pleasure to introduce principal officers of the university that are here present, and the team is being led by the vice chancellor himself, Professor Kayodi Adibowale, FAS MNI. 
Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration is also here with us, <coughs> Professor Ezekiel Ayola. Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Professor Adirunke Bayeroju. The Registrar of the University, who just assumed duties yesterday, is here with us, Mr. Ganiu Oke Saliu. Provost College of Medicine, he's here with us, Professor Olayinka Umibodu, FAS. And the Deputy Provost of the College is also here with us, Professor E. Adeniyi. On behalf of the University of Ibadan, it's also my pleasure to welcome all important dignitaries to this brief ceremony. Before we start with the orations, I was told that a personal friend of the deceased wants to make a little presentation, and that is the laying of a wreath by Professor Ogumola. May I request, sir, that you come forward to lay your wreath. Professor Gumola, sir. Thank you very much, sir. May I now request a professor, a member of the family, Professor Folabi Ogunlesi, to give the first oration. Professor B. O. Onodeko is a professor of the College of Medicine and a colleague of Professor Ogunlesi. May I request you to rise for your oration, sir? Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. The Vice Chancellor, Deputy Vice Chancellors, the Provost, Deans of Faculties, all other protocols observed. Emeritus Professor Theophilus Oladipo Ogunlesi, FAS, OFR, and Academic Titan of Many Fests. It is a Herculean task to write a befitting tribute to a, for a personality of many firsts, who lived a monumental life of honor, integrity, discipline, and unparalleled life of service to God and humanity. I refer to our much revered torch bearer, a teacher of teachers, a professor of professors, Papa, Emeritus Professors Theophilus Oladipo Ogunlesi, FASOFR. He was destined by faith to succeed in his epoch making fulfilled life. God gave him a long life to exploit his full potentials to thrive and to flourish. I first met this great man when I joined the Department of Medicine, at University College, Ibadan as a medical registrar from Britain in 1967. He was then acting head of the Department of Medicine as Professor Alexander Brown was away on leave. He struck me then as a man of unquantifiable qualities. 
that impression still remains with me up to today. It is an honor to serve under him and to learn from him. It is an irony of fate that I was the head of department when he retired from the service of university in 1983. That opportunity gave me the chance to show my appreciation to him for the decades he has been a shining light to me and others in and outside the department who benefited from his academic and professional expertise. He was a man of many firsts in his medical and academic career for which he has been justifiably rewarded with both academic and national honors. He was the first African to be appointed or promoted as professor in the department. What an achievement. He was the first head of department to start a novel academic and clinical program almost 60 years ago titled Charles Review Meeting. When he returned from his sojourn in the United States of America, that early morning program is still running up to today. Incidentally, he made me the first coordinator of this program. He was the first academic to be appointed to the pioneer director of Ibarapa Health Program, a program that gave the University of Ibado a global recognition in medical training and practice in the rural community. He was the first professor to be appointed to the River position of Emeritus Professor in the College of Medicine, University of Ibadan. I had the privilege of being the head of the department at that time. And to God be the glory, I followed in his suit. Similarly, it is on record that he became the first foundation president of the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria. Time will not permit me to detail all his achievements in his academic and professional life, for they are awesome. He impacted positively on many people within and outside the academic and medical community. We shall miss him dearly but his legacy lives on in our hearts. Vini Vidi Vicky. He came, he saw, he conquered. I commiserate with his children and other members of their family for the unpreventable loss of this academic giant. The consolation, however, Consolation, however, sorry. Sorry. Is that we are all proud to be associated with him and witness his meteoric performance. Department of Medicine, University of Ibadan. Congratulations to ha in having a colossus to guide you and work with you for decades. I would like to conclude this tribute by quoting from the Holy Scriptures, Proverbs 22, verse 29, to commend the life of our Papa, Emeritus Professor Theophilus Ogunlesi, which says, Seest thou a man in his diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before men. May his soul Rest in perfect peace. Amen. Thank you. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to recognize the presence in our midst of a former vice chancellor of this university, Professor Ayo Falashe. Now, it's my pleasure to invite a relation, the son of the Meritorious Professor we are honoring today, 
Professor Folabi Ogunlesi to give an oration on behalf of the family. Mr. Vice Chancellor, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, first of all, apologies for coming late, a uh, bit of traffic. Vice Chancellor, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I present Theophilus Oladipo Ogunesi, licentiate of the School of Medicine of Nigeria, licentiate of Royal College of Physicians of London, member of the Royal College of Surgeons of England, Fellow of the Royal College of Physicians of London, Fellow of the Royal College of Physicians of Edinburgh, Fellow of the Medical College of Physique, Nigeria, Distinguished Fellow of the Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria, Foundation President of the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria, Honorary Doctor of Science, Agoy Woye, Honorary Doctor of Science, Ibadan, Ba Shegun of Ibarakwa, Ba Shegun of Remoland, Otun Ba Shegun of Ibadan, former Vice President, Nigerian Medical Association, former Vice President, Nigeria Academy of Sciences, member of the New York Ad Academy of Sciences, fellow of the Third World Academy of Sciences, officer of the Order of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Emeritus Professor of Medicine. Born in Shagamo on the 12th of July, 1923, Theophilos Ogunlesi graduated from the famous CMS Grammar School in 1940, where he won most of the prizes in his final year. His records indicate he spent only six years in primary school instead of the usual eight. Have clear evidence of brilliant that's become famous worldwide and was already on display. Given his brilliance, it was natural for the young Theophilus to seek higher education after CMS, and he gained entry into the higher college Yada to study medicine. He graduated in 1947 at the age of 24. His first medical qu qualification was a licentiate, a qualification which limited his registration to practice only in Nigeria. Bent on greater academic laurels, Ogunlesi found his way to London in 1949, where without any exemptions, he sat all the examinations of a conjoint MRCS England LRCP London diploma, from anatomy through pathology to the finals in medicine and surgery, successfully in a record 12 months. The first Nigerian trained doctor to do so. This paved way for him to further postgraduate studies in the UK and the US. The physician had been born. Theophilus Ogunlesi was a pioneer, scoring first in virtually everything he did. He was the first Nigerian physician to become a member of Royal College of Physicians of London by examination at the first attempt in 1958, 65 years ago. He was the first Nigerian to be elected a fellow of the Royal College of Physicians of London in 1972. He was part of the team that designed the first curriculum of the Badon Medical School after which he was appointed the first director of the Barakwa Community Health Program in 1963. He was elected to a chair in Ibadan as the first Nigerian professor of medicine in 1965, later in 1972 became the first Nigerian head of department and was the foundation president of the Postgraduate Medical College. On, the 27th, on his 27th birthday, 12th of July, he got married in East Croydon to Susan Olon Femi Peters, while he was still a house officer at the Hammersmith. A settled and happy married life has been the secret of Ogunlesi's phenomenal career as a physician. We salute his solid contributions and also those of his late wife, Olon Femi. The marriage has produced myself and my six siblings, all of whom have made their success in their chosen careers, including my sister, Fola Shade, an associate professor and attending pediatric pulmonologist in Washington, D.C., as well as Adebayo, my brother, chairman and managing partner of Global Infrastructure Partners, as you know, the owners of Gatwick, Edinburgh, and several other things. Daddy belongs to the first generation of academic physicians. 
Armed with two postgraduate medical diplomas, MRCP London and MRCP Edinburgh, he returned to Nigeria in 1958 and promoted to grade of a specialist physician in Western Nigeria civil service. First time ever in the Nigerian civil service. He took over headship of the Department of Medicine at Dioyo, and after Professor Alexander Brown uh, um, had been head from 1948 to uh, 57 at Adioyo. Uh, and then they had a very close working relationship until Sandy Brown's untimely death in 1972. Time will not permit me any more detailed analysis of Daddy's seminal contributions, particularly in the field of community medicine. Having spotted his potential, Alexander Brown strongly persuaded Daddy to cross over to academia in 1961, and that's where he joined the Faculty of Medicine as a senior lecturer and honorary consultant at the University College Hospital. By 1965, he was a professor of medicine, barely four years. Brown believed in promoting uh, Nigerians into academia to tr join him in transforming the medical school in Ibadan. Perhaps the most enduring legacy of uh, Daddy's career is an, uh, as an academic physician is the Barakwa program, which arose from a decision of the entire faculty in Ibadan, um, that the medical school was to develop a curriculum which produced doctors for the London MBBS degree, but at the same time capable of working in rural communities where most of Nigerians live. This was a difficult decision for Daddy to take at that time, but the inconveniences um, and the comforts of clinical practice at UCH um, did not deter him, and uh, the program has become widely acclaimed by educationists and is now a model for medical schools worldwide. There is no way I can give full credit to Daddy in a citation of his brevity on an occasion such as this. However, it's my singular honor and privilege to pay tribute to an erudite scholar, a renowned teacher, and a most distinguished physician and an accomplished Nigerian. Thank you. Thank you very much. That we are all here to honor Emeritus Professor Gulesi shows that he is a man that has achieved, that achieved a lot in his lifetime. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we don't clap. Thank you. Now may I invite a representative of the Nigerian Academy of Science, Professor M. O. Owolabi, for his oration. The family of late Emeritus Professor Theophilus Ogunlesi, the Vice Chancellor, the Deputy Vice Chancellors, uh, the Provost, Deans present, the Head of the Department of Medicine, other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Emeritus Professor Theophilus Oladipo. Ogunlesi, FAS, Theophilus, indeed a lover of God. Born on 12th July 1923 and passed away to greater glory on January 19, 2023. You are born of humble beginnings, son of a blacksmith. You rose to the peak of your career and as a pioneer, using medicine as your passport to break through barriers and open the doors for others. As a physician, researcher, and teacher, a physician providing excellent service to the underserved, a researcher who investigated tropical diseases and imagined non-communicable diseases, a teacher who loved teaching and taught generations of undergraduate and postgraduate students and laid the foundation for, the postgraduate, for postgraduate medical education in Nigeria. 
You are the first African to pass the Royal College of Physicians exam. You are the first Nigerian professor of medicine. You are the first Nigerian head of the Department of Medicine, University of Ibadan. You are the first president of the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria. You are a foundation fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Science. And the Academy is proud of your glowing and monumental achievements. Above all, you love God as Theophilus. So according to Psalm 91, verses 14 to 16, King James Version, because he had set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he had known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And indeed, God has honored you. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Indeed, you have obeyed the first law and the fulfillment of all laws, which is love. Luke 10, 27. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And indeed, you have sought and found the kingdom of God. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And God has rewarded you with all goodness. So you have put on immortality, immortality as you have united with the epitome, the omega, and source of all goodness. Adieu, great and gentle giant, who loved and grew towards God, and God took you. Theotropic Theophilus. But your light continues to shine in the countless generations of men and women whose candles you have lit and your seeds, in whom you have imparted the virtue of righteousness and rectitude, continue to flourish like palm trees and grow like cedars in Lebanon. May your soul continue to rest in God's peace and glory. much members of the UC Symphonia group. Now we're going to take some more orations and it's my pleasure to invite the president of ICOMA, Professor O. Otolori. Vice-Chancellor, 
Please permit me to rest on established protocol. Professor Theophilus Oladipo Gulesi's name has been very well written into the history books on medical education in Nigeria. He attended the famous Yaba Medical School where he qualified as a licentiate in surgery and medicine. He then proceeded to the University of Dublin in Ireland where he obtained his MBBS degree in 1955. That singular action helped to bring respectability to the Nigerian doctors trained at the Yaba Medical School and made him eligible for appointment as medical officer, a position previously held solely by expatriate doctors. He later pursued postgraduate education at the prestigious University of Edinburgh, where he earned his Doctor of Medicine degree. After returning to Nigeria, he was appointed lecturer consultant physician at the Badomedical Medical School and University College Hospital, where he made notable contributions in the field of medicine. He was to later become the first Nigerian professor of medicine uh, from 1965 until he retired in 1983. He was a teacher of teachers, a mentor of mentors, and a pioneer of the compulsory Ibarakpa rural posting for medical students. This aspect of medical education was to later become a model for many other medical schools in Africa and beyond. A tribute to Professor Gulesi cannot be completed without reference to his visionary role in the establishment of postgraduate medical education in Nigeria and in West Africa. His pioneering role has been well recognized by previous speakers. When we talk about brain drain in the health sector today, we must remember that he helped to make Nigeria a production factory for quality medical specialists that are now highly sought after all over the world. His death at this time marks the exit of an icon an accomplished medical giant, an erudite scholar, an administrator, and a worthy son of the soil. For this reason, we members of Ibadan College of Medicine Alumni Association worldwide hereby wish to express our immense gratitude to him for his service and dedication to the College of Medicine and to our great country. Life is like a train journey. Nobody knows the station where we will all depart. He has come, he has served, he has departed. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Thank you. The next oration will be given by a representative of the Barakwa Community Health Program. And it's my pleasure to invite Professor M. Asuzu to give this oration. Mr. Vice Chancellor Sarah, the family of Pa Ogunlesi, I make this tribute personally to Pa Ogunlesi. You can listen on. I count it great privilege, our dearest Professor T. Ogunlesi, to be requested in any ways at all to give this funeral oration in your honor. I came to Ibado as a medical student in the ebbing years of your full-time employment here. And I did the Barakwa Rural Health Training Program in the last year of your foundation directorship of the program. So in actual fact, we would nearly 
be said to have only smelt the smell, the aroma of your activities here as a colossus of community-oriented and community-based medical education, of which the 1962-63 onset MBBS Ibado is the first of its kind in world history. I belong to the network of community-oriented medical education, and I had a task of raising the task force file of that network. And the battle was five years ahead of any medical school that was shining as community-based and community-oriented. And it was my privilege to publish severally in the journal of that organization to make that very clearly known globally. But the aroma was enough to eventually lead us to full specialty of disciplinary public health and community medicine when it eventually developed and became and we became resident doctors in it in 1979. That year you also became the foundation president of the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria, courtesy of one of your foremost direct protégés of our present professor, Oladele Olusiji Kale, who is my own direct mentor in the full-blown practice of community medicine. So I am a professional grandchild of Professor Gunlesi. As the Holy Writ has taught us, sir, the souls of any faithful departed of God are in his hands, surely, and at peace and no harm can ever reach them anymore. So it is surely with you, and for which we thank God. May God grant your family, and all of us, who very naturally mourn your going to be with God, all the graces that we need for a time like this. May those graces also yield fruits in our lives, and in the lives ahead of anyone who knows you. So, sir, you will know that besides all the firsts that you are celebrated for, you love deeply, you work very hard, you valued people big and small, including less significant ones such as my humble self. You never failed to offer me a chance of the ikokore, ijebu, delicacy whenever I had the fortune to visit you at your Shagamu Makon natural habitat home. You did honor to your friends and were faithful to the minutest ones of them, even unto their deaths. You did this to all the people in the Barakwa program that ever worked with you, big and small, even up to last year. He was insisting that we go to the funeral of one of them who died. You were one of the Mohicans of the Yaba Medical School that produced only medical assistance, merely because we didn't have standard hospitals approvable by the Colonial Medical and Dental Councils. But like many of the products of the school, you went ahead years after to the UK and became fully licensed and specialized but disciplinary public health that doctors Isaac Ladipo Luole and Oladele Ajose taught you at Yaba never left you. You kept on manifesting it still, even from internal medicine. A great lesson for every one of us who may start life at any point in life, that the sky is not even your limit. Twice in my life, I had the fortune to present a leading presentation at occasions that you were being celebrated. At your 80th birthday by the Nigerian Academy of Science at Sheraton Hotel in Ikeja, Lagos. I did that presentation on behalf of myself and his great, his immediate protege, Professor Kale. I also had a chance to make a presentation in your honor for the Center for Values in Leadership, Lagos, when they held your celebration here in this trenchard hall. And your appreciation of those who were celebrating you at, your, at those times 
was more than they could give you. You honor them wherever you are present. When in 2007, after I did not respond to the adverts to apply to become director of the Barakwa program, I was invited to still come and specifically apply. And as I was considering it, I came to you at Markham personally to inform you why I did not want to do so. You encouraged me to do so in spite of everything. You promised to come to speak to the provost and the chief medical director of the University College Hospital of the lack of institutional and political will for the program. That was why I was not willing to become director of the program. When they gave you an appointment for this exercise at a very difficult time of 8 a.m. in the morning for you to travel from Shagamu to meet the young people, you made all the terribly needed efforts and sacrifices at your very old age notwithstanding. You were here at quarter to 8 o'clock. The failure of all that sacrifice to yield the needed fruits of those political will and institutional will sought after by you personally were chronicled in the University of Barrow lectures of the 2012-2013 academic year by yours truly. And you were here to honor us as we did so as well. That situation has not changed much. And you are as a whole there's very much to do in it. So, even at this your home call and physical loss to us is a great loss. It is also a great gain because now you will be in the presence of God and you can appeal to him to help us. This event is a sur sum corda. Rise up. The whole of the battle, you are Rise up the whole of College of Medicine and UCH and do this man honor. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Professor Ogunlesi. And my heart rejoices that he's with God. May he rest in peace and intercede for us. I thank you very much. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the next oration comes from Professor Ogulis's department, the Department of Medicine, and it's my pleasure to invite the head of the department, Professor Adibola Ugubi, to deliver the oration. The Vice Chancellor. Professor Keo Adebo Ali, FAS MNI, the family of late Professor Theophilos Ogulisi, the Deputy Vice Chancellors present, Registrar, the Provost of the College of Medicine, Dean of the Faculty of Clinical Science, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I join others in paying tribute to Emeritus Professor Theophilos Oladipo Ogulisi who was the first indigenous head of Department of Medicine in the then Faculty of Medicine, University of Ibadan, and the University College Hospital, Ibadan. Professor Gulesi was obviously a man of diverse attainments and great accomplishments. We have heard today that he was the first in many instances. His career in the Department of Medicine, University of Ibadan, took off as an associate lecturer in 1959, becoming a full-time lecturer in 1961, associate professor in 1962, and a full professor in 1965, working concurrently as 
Honorary Consultant to the University College Hospital, Ibado. Professor Ogulesi was head of Department of Medicine from 1969 to 1972, taking over the headship from Professor Alexander Brown, the pioneer head of the department following the latest demise. His areas of interest included cardiovascular medicine, medical education, and community medicine. As a cardiologist, Professor Gulesi and his colleagues studied and published articles on the epidemiology and clinical features of rheumatic heart disease in the early 70s, a common heart disorder at that time. He was a visiting fellow at the Heart Hospital, University of Minnesota, member of the WHO Expert Advisory Committee on Cardiovascular Diseases, president of the Association of Physicians of Nigeria, and a member of the UCH Board of Management, among other positions. Some of his colleagues in cardiology included Dr. Cole, Kasli, and Professor Falashe. Professor Gulesi was well known for his passion in medical education. As head of the department, he was involved in innovative curriculum development aimed at making undergraduate teaching and learning more efficient and purpose oriented He was involved in the project Medical Education and Medical Manpower, training at specialist and subspecialist level in the 70s. The project reviewed teaching and assessment methods in the department to ensure students benefited from the practical and clinical experiences despite their increasing numbers and the fixed number of hospital beds limiting the admission of patients. The project also reappraised the relevance to the community of the existing course content of the undergraduate and postgraduate curriculum. This led to the addition of the Rural Health Community Health Program, the Barapa Community Health Project in 1963, which resulted in the change from MBBS London to MBBS Ibadan. Professor Ogulesi will always be remembered for the role he played in taking academic medicine into the community. He was a pioneer director of the Barapa project. One of the articles in The Lancet, a leading British medical journal, described the Barapa project as a major breakthrough in medical teaching in Africa and praised the far-seeing faculty of medicine in Ibadan for making a move which could well provide a pattern for future medical training throughout the developing world. Professor Ogulesi's work in the community was well appreciated and he was honored with three chieftaincy titles from Oshun State, Ogun State, and Oyo State. Professor Ogulesi was a prolific writer. He authored, co-authored books and chapters in books and articles in journals. Notably amongst this uh, teaching hospital budget in relation to medical education in 50 years of medical research, economics of healthcare in national health planning, and My Passport, his autobiography, which was published by Spectrum Books. I believe his interest in medical education paved the way for his nomination as a foundation president of the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria. Professor Ogulesi was a seasoned administrator. He served the government in numerous capacities related to health, education, and research. Professor Ogulesi received many other awards and honors and was a member of several professional bodies. Notably, he received the honor of the F officer of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in 1983 and was advisor to the federal government on medical education from 1980 to 1983. He retired from the University of Ibadan in 1983 and was appointed emeritus professor in the department, the first in 1986. Upon retirement, he remained quite active as an administrator in Ongu State. The department was excited when he turned up for a departmental retreat in 2019, only four years ago, at the age of 95. And that gave the opportunity to many young members who did not know him to fellowship with him. Professor Ogunlesi was a groundbreaker, seasoned administrator and medical educationist. He chose to go where there was no path and left a trail. He will be sorely missed by us all. The passing of this great icon is a reminder that we are all pilgrims on this earth. Our prayer is that the Almighty will comfort the whole family at this time. May his gentle soul rest in peace. Amen.
The Department of Medicine belongs to the Faculty of Clinical Sciences. It's therefore my pleasure to invite the Dean of the Faculty of Clinical Sciences, Professor Tio Ogunjiro, to give the next citation. The Vice Chancellor of the University of Ibadan, other principal officers of the university, family of our late professor, all other protocol duly observed. There's a land beyond the river that we call the sweet forever. And we only reach that shore by fate's decree. One by one, we'll gain the portals they are to dwell with the immortals when they ring their golden bells for you and me. For Professor Emeritus Theophilus Oladipo Gunlesi, Fellow of the Royal College of Physicians of Edinburgh, London, Pioneer Fel Fellow of the Academy of Science, Officer of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Golden Bells tall came blasting on Thursday, January 19, 2023, when its labors and works air ceased and was called up higher. In the words of the great Apostle Paul, he had fought his own fight, he had finished his own course, and his sojourn here on earth had ended. We are gathered here today in his honor to celebrate his life and pay tribute to him for his immense contributions to society and to mankind. Professor Ogunlesi began his faculty career in the Department of Medicine in 1959 and rose to become a full professor in 1965 and emeritus professor of medicine in 1986. He served as the head of the Department of Medicine from 1969 to 1972 and retired from that department in 1983. He was a co-founder of the Barapa Community Health Project, a project he also served as its director. He also served in many academic, clinical, administrative leadership and advisory positions in the university, at the University College Hospital, in the postgraduate medical colleges, at the national level in Nigeria, and also internationally. <laughs> Professor Ogunlesi's academic and professional contributions to various aspects of general medicine, health care systems, and medical education, both locally and internationally, remain trailblazers. The testimonies are bound and attest to the life of a man who was graciously and mercifully endowed by God and chosen by him to achieve great things in life for the good of his communities. No doubt, he gave all he had to fulfill that vision and mission with passion, lived his life to the full in accomplishing this mandate. May we all fulfill our mission here to the glory of God. On behalf of the Faculty of Clinical Sciences, College of Medicine, University of Ibadan, I say thank you to the family for giving him to us and for supporting him to serve in all the many roles in which he served humanity. I also say congratulations for having this erudite scholar, a rare gem and precious gift to humanity as your progenitor. In ending this tribute, I quote, fading away like stars in the morning of the morning, losing their light in the glorious sun. Thus would we pass from the earth and its toiling, only remembered by what we have done. Professor Emeritus Theophilus Oladipo Gunlesi, you have left behind more than enough for us to remember you by always. Adieu. The Faculty of Clinical Sciences is one of the four faculties that make up the College of Medicine. 
It's therefore appropriate that the Provost College of Medicine delivers an oration on behalf of the college. It's my pleasure to invite Professor Olayinka Omigbodun, FAS, to deliver this oration. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, on behalf of the entire staff, students, and alumni at the College of Medicine, University of Ibadan, I express our heartfelt condolences to the children, grandchildren, family biological, and family academic of Emeritus Professor Theophilos O. Ogunlesi, OFR FAS. This passing took place on Thursday, 19th January, 2023. I have decided to describe my encounters with Emeritus Professor Ogunlesi through reading his memoirs described by Chief Dr. M. A. Majekodumi, CFR, in his foreword to a book as a well-written, detailed, orderly, and mine of information, not only about himself, but also about the development of medical education and medical care in modern day Nigeria. I describe encounters through letters he had written to me in the last few months, which reveal his passion and visions. I also describe him through the phone calls I was privileged to receive from him. I was also privileged to meet with him just a few months ago and share his thoughts as he approached his 100th birthday. What a great privilege to have received tutelage from a pioneer in the medical field in his 100th year. I count myself truly privileged and blessed. Lessons learned from visiting him while he was admitted into Babcock University Teaching Hospital. On the 11th of September, 2023, I was returning from a trip abroad and Papa Ogunlesi had requested that I visit him. At that time, he was admitted at the Babcock Teaching Hospital. So we turned off the Lagos Ibadan Road and went to meet with him. My first feeling was sadness that he was not in the University College Hospital, Ibadan. However, he was very upbeat and had prepared for my visit, for he had with him several books he felt were important for me to have, read, and digest. He wanted me to write the names of the books down and so before I left, I took photographs of each of them. The books were majorly about Iboara Project, a history of the Nigerian health services by Ralph Scram, 25 years of the Ibarra Community Health Program edited by ABOO Oyediran W. R. Brigger, Ibarra Park Project, University of Ibano. Students at Iboara, University of Ibano. Iboara in connectivity, rising to global benefits. He also had a book titled The Man Aditokumbo Lucas, edited by Bolanle Awe, Onyade Oluri, and Kayode Onyediro. He also presented his memoirs titled Medicine My Passport, which I had read as we had this in our home. He employed me to get copies of these books from the university library and ensure that I read them. I promised him that I would try to. Coincidentally, in 2018, I was very privileged to have delivered the Mabayoje Lecture on behalf of the Faculty of Psychiatry of the West African College of Physicians at a yearly conference and annual scientific meeting in Freetown, Sierra Leone. In learning about Mabayoje, amongst others, I studied medicine, my passport, and I quoted Emeritus Ogunlesi several times during my lecture as I wrote about Dr. Ulu Mabayoje. I quote, I left Nigeria with a strong determination to follow the footsteps of Dr. Olu Mabayoje, who had earlier blazed the trail in Dublin in 1948 by taking all the examinations of the medical course one by one, beginning with anatomy and physiology, and passing each and every one of the examinations of the entire medical course in six years, all within 12 months. More importantly, the credit for leading the way and for taking the first steps which paved the way for the introduction of systematic training and examinations into Nigeria at the postgraduate level belongs unquestionably to Dr. J. O. Mabayoje at the time when he was Registrar of the Nigerian Medical Council. 
I quote on, Dr. Mabayoje had the patriotic zeal, the intellect, the professional vision to explore to the fullest the provisions of the act which set up the Nigerian Medical Council in 1963. And he and his colleagues on the council at that time used their position on the council to lay the foundation of professional postgraduate training and examination in Nigeria as they exist today, unquote. How many men, must I add, how many women would truly boast about another in their memoirs? Papa Ogunlesi did, showcasing another giant. But beyond that, the determination to follow in his footsteps revealed a great mind. I quote from Bernard Soldier, there's nothing wrong with being a great follower, especially when you're following with leadership intent. When you learn as a follower can prepare you to be a great leader than you can ever have imagined. To be a great leader, learn to be a great follower, unquote. He also wrote about his privilege with longevity, which is a blessing. I quote, but my father lived to a ripe old age of 100 years, and my mother more than 100 years before they died. A study of past records of the family, which I have made, suggests that the proper genes for longevity are there and are being passed on from one generation to the next. Unquote. After many struggles with strikes and strife in the College of Medicine, University of Bado, we are now resuscitating memorial lectures, and we will push this earnestly. History is key. And I quote again about the importance of history. Whoever wishes to foresee the future must consult the past. For human events ever resemble those of preceding times. This arises from the fact that they are produced by men who ever have been, ever shall be, animated by the same passions, and thus they have necessarily the same results. Lessons from his letters about Igbora. On September 23rd, 2022, I received a letter from Emeritus Professor Ogulesi announcing to me the death of his friend, Prophet um, Sunday Ojelabi. Prophet Ojelabi had written a book about Igbora, and he was very concerned about the need to get the book published. And I quote from him, in the letter, five days before his death, he came to my house in Shagamu with five copies of the book. I know it had taken him about five years to write this book. However, I could see that in his heart, it was the vision for the direction of Ibora in the years to come. And I quote him again. As a matter of fact, Professor Kenneth D.K., the first Nigerian Vice Chancellor of the University College Ibadan, may have been thinking along the same lines when he made his inaugural address at an impressive ceremony at Igbora Health Center on February 9, 1963. In that address, he saw the project as a multi-purpose university training center for teaching, practice, and research that could lead to the social economic development of rural communities, even though only the faculty of medicine then was involved in the beginning. And then he went on to, he says, acknowledge the generosity of Rockefeller and Ford Foundations while I was director of the program. Dr. Jack Ware arranged virtually a worldwide tour for me to visit rural development programs in Kenya, Tanzania, Zambia, India, Pakistan, Chile, and several places in South America. Lessons from a phone call I received from him. I received the last phone call from Papa Emeritus Ogunlesi on 1st January 2023. It was a New Year greeting informing me he had made it to the year of his 100th birthday and was looking forward to a celebration on 12th July 2023. Truly, it was emphasized to me again another lesson. Many are the plans of a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. A final lesson in faith. As I was about to head to Ibadan and leave his bedside, Papa Emeritus Professor Tio Ogunlesi prayed for me and for my success, and then he gave me some counsel. He informed me that there was a hymn that he sung every day as he set out for work. He enjoined me to sing that hymn every morning as I commit my day to the Lord. We sang the first verse of the hymn together, and deep in thought, I left him. When I got home, I asked my husband, Professor Akin Kaumibodun, to please play the keyboard 
so I could sing the hymn Papa Emeritus Professor Ogunlesi had prescribed. And indeed, the recording remains on my phone for me to sing often and remember. This hymn composed by Charles Wesley in 1749. It was titled Before Work, famously known as Forth in Thy Name, O Lord, I Go. Forth in thy name, O Lord, I go, my daily labor to pursue, determined only you to know in all I think or speak or do. For you I joyously employ, whatever you in grace have given, I run my daily course with joy and closely walk with you to heaven. <laughs> for us to do is for people to pay their last respects to the cops. And as the Symphonia group sings the other verses of the song, I'd like to request that people who are yet to do so should rise to pay their last respects to Professor Ogunlesi. <laughs> From the back, this side of the hall, please. Thank you. 
delivered by the Vice Chancellor, Professor Kayode Uyibodi Adibowali, MNI FAS, Vice Chancellor, University of Ibado. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I defended my PhD on the 14th of October, 1991. And since then, I began a humble academic career. I have not listened to any oration that can be compared to this. This is an embodiment of the man that we have come to honor and a testimonial of a highly impacted life. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 4, says, By faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, that he became a witness unto righteousness, God testifying of his gifts, even though he were dead, but yet liveth. What shall we be remembered for? Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration, Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, the registrar, the bursar, university librarian, provost of the College of Medicine, dean of the Faculty of Clinical Sciences, deans of other faculties, directors of institutes and centers, heads of departments, fellows of the Nigerian Academy of Science and emeriti professors that are present here, the family and friends of late Professor Theophilus Oladipo Ogunlesi, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Here lies the body of Professor Theophilus Oladipo Ogunlesi, a renowned professor of medicine at the College of Medicine, University of Ibadan and a consultant cardiologist at the University College Hospital, Ibadan. Born on 12 July 1923 in Shagamu, Ogun State, he went to be with the Lord on 19 January 2023. Professor Theophilus Oladipo Ogunlesi attended St. Paul's Primary School, Shagamu, from 1930 to 1936 and CMS Grammar School, Lagos, from 1936 to 1940. He enrolled at Yaba High College between 1941 and 1942 for his pre-medical program and subsequently attended the Yaba Medical College from 1942 to 1947. He qualified as a licentiate in surgery and medicine with distinctions in medicine and public health in 1947. He worked as an assistant medical officer and specialist physician in the, in the then western and northern regions of Nigeria, after which he went for his postgraduate medical education at the Postgraduate Medical School of the University of London between 1956 and 1957, and thereafter at the University of Minnesota, Minneapolis, United States, between 1967 and 1968. His professional qualifications and awards include a fellow Royal College of Physicians, Edinburgh, in 1962, fellow Royal College of Physicians, London, in 1970, the first Nigerian fellow of the London College, fellow West African College of Physicians in 1978, a foundation fellow. He was inducted as a pioneer fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Science in 1977, and was awarded the Merit Award Officer of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, OFR, in 1983. Scholarships and prizes received during his undergraduate and postgraduate education include Sir Walter Johnson's Prize in Public Health, 
Yaba High College in 1946. Sir Walter Johnson's Prize in Medicine. Class Proficiency Prize, Yaba College in 1947. Rockefeller Traveling Fellowship in 1963. World Health Organization, WHO Research Fellow in Cardiology and Ford Foundation Traveling Fellowship to India, Pakistan, and the Far East in 1971. Professor Ogunlesi started his career in the Department of Medicine of the University of Ibadan in 1961. He became an associate professor in 1962 and full professor in 1965. He was also a honorary consultant to the University College Hospital, UCH, in 1961 until his retirement. He was the head of the Department of Medicine from 1969 to 1972 and retired from the department in 1983. He was later appointed Emeritus Professor of Medicine in 1986. During his teaching career, he taught such notable people as the former Vice Chancellor, University of Ibadan, and Honorable Minister of Health of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Isaac Folon Shuadewoli. He taught also a founding member of the Pan African Association of Neurological Sciences, Professor Kayo Deo Shintokun, and late Professor Yombo Awojobi, who was a distinguished surgeon. He excelled as the director of the Barakwa Community Health Project of the University of Ibadan, of which he was the co-founder with Professor, with the late Professor Alexandra Brown. And that has been attested to in some of the orations that have been read earlier. Professor Ogunles is served in many capacities in matters relating to health, education, and research, some which include the following. He was advisor to the federal government of Nigeria on medical education between 1980 and 1983, the first president of the Nigerian Postgraduate College of Nigeria between 1980 and 1984, member National Implementation Committee for the Health Sector of the Third National Development Plan of the Federal Republic of Nigeria between 1975 and 1979, member management board of the University College Hospital between 1969 and 1972, member representing University of Ibadan Medical School and member Nigerian Medical Council between 1975 and 1979. He was also member of the governing council of the University of Nigeria on Suka in 1984, special member, medical expert and advisor Ibaraka local government between 1972 and 1975. As a recognition of his outstanding contributions to the community as a specialist physician, he was awarded honorary chieftaincy titles of Ba Shegun, the father of medicine for both Ibaraka or your state and Remo in Ogun state. He was an active member of many professional societies. He was the past president, Association of Physicians of Nigeria, former national vice president and state chairman, Nigerian Medical Association, member Nigerian Medical Council between 1975 and 1979, member University College Hospital Board of Management between 1966 and 1972, member Nigerian Cardiac Society, secretary Nigerian Royal Society for Tropical Medicine and Hygiene since 1965, member International Society for Hypertension and member of the World Health Organization Scientific Advisory Committee on Cardiovascular Diseases between 1969 and 1972. He authored and co-authored several papers and articles on various aspects of general medicine, healthcare systems, and medical education in both local and international journals. Professor Gunlesi 
did not just follow a ready-made path, but instead he went to where there was no existing one, and he left behind a trail. Professor Ogunlesi was a charismatic medical elder, a profound scholar, a great clinician, an astute scientist, doctor of doctors, teacher of teachers, a medical pathfinder, a quintessential leader, and a great administrator. Professor Gulesi was a family man, got married to Susan Oloron Femi Peters in 1950, and the marriage is blessed with seven children, and we have heard from one of them today. In addition, one of them, Adebayo, was a member of the Donald Trump's former American president's economic team. Undoubtedly, Nigeria, medical profession, the health community, and the University of Ibadan has lost, they have lost a colossus who inspired many up and coming medical professionals with his life of commitment to patient care, medical ethics, equity, and justice. As the remains of Professor Gunlesi lie here, I conclude my oration in these words. Sadly missed along life's way, quietly remembered every day, no longer in our life to share, but in our hearts, you are always there. Adieu, Professor Ogunlesi, a great physician. May his inimitable and gentle soul rest in perfect peace. May I now invite Dr. Shade Ogunlesi, daughter of Professor Emeritus Ogunlesi, to give the vote of thanks on behalf of the Ogunlesi family. Mr. Vice Chancellor and distinguished academics, I stand on all existing protocols. Provost College of Medicine, I did not know that my song that was for my dad was shared with you as well. That makes you very special. We sang it on my way to work whenever I called him, and he always reminded me that we always go in the name of the Lord. We've heard a lot of erudite narrations of daddy. But the significance of what you have done today is what we're here to thank you for. And let me remind you or tell you how significant this is. Daddy and all of us came on Odujua Road to this trenchard hall. The significance of Odujua Road is where we all grew up. Number three, Odudua Road, was where most of us were born. And that's where we started our journeys in life. Number three, Odudua Road, was where mommy started her nursery school, which is where many, I would say almost 90% of those of us who grew up in UI, started our education. The Potter's Lodge, which is right here, is where we all knew to come 
and pick up the, the mail every evening. That was what we were assigned to do, which we fought over many times. The arts theater is where on Saturday mornings we all went to do the art and drama and watch plays. And UI was our life. We went to primary school, we left from primary school. And Daddy's wish was that all of us would come back to that great university. Three of us defected. One went to Lagos, another went to Oxford, and the other one went to Ife. So they're trailing behind because there were three out of four of us. Trenchard Hall, where Daddy now lies, on his final journey, is where those four of us graduated. This is where Daddy robed on November 17th every year, the Founders' Day. The significance of Founders' Day is that that is the day that my sister Titi was born, our late sister. And on the 18th, after her 30th birthday was when she died. Trenchard Hall is where Falabi and Funlayo of the Professor Adia Jai family who are here, Auntie, thank you ma for coming, got married. So the significance of our thanks is beyond those, those two words of thank you. So I will say, wherever daddy went, his entourage will always include the church. As you've heard, his name was lover of God. He served God and he served mankind. He left us with that legacy of service because that's where he came from and that's what he left behind. So you can see that his church is represented here. They came from Shagam. And he always went with his family. And so it's just not me. It's not just his biological children. His first child, Professor Ogumola, is right there. And Princess Ogumola, daughter of the late Olubado, was instrumental. Olubado was instrumental to that Bashegu of Oyo, Oyo State. My cousins and extended family are all here. They are all daddy's children, all of them. Mrs. Onoshile, when she was in UI, grew up in, in our house. Through Odudua Road, housed many. I gave up my bed for many older cousins because they had to stay with us. So on behalf of the whole entire Ogunlesi family, on behalf of my brothers, my sisters, his grandchildren and his great-grandchildren, all of whom he saw two weeks before he died. We thank you for what you have done to honor him today. Thank you, University of Ibado, for embracing him, for honoring him in his life and in death. Thank you. We have almost come to the end of the program, and as the Symphonia Group gives us a musical interlude, the Vice Chancellor will lead the academic procession to pay their last respects to the late Emeritus Professor Ogunlesi, as well as greet the family. And may I request that, but for the immediate family, all, every other person should stand as the academic procession stands to leave the hall. Thank you. Please may I request that we all stand, please.
the pallbearers will carry out the coffin because there is a farewell ceremony to be done outside for the coffin. family will follow the coffin. Oh, the family will go before the coffin. The academic procession is waiting outside for the family. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow the coffin to leave the hall before we all do. Hold their ass, please. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. God bless.